Hello, yes, and welcome, welcome everyone to the launch stream for Beyond the Wire Operation 2 for King and Country. So I've managed to steal our creative director, Bruno, uh, for a quick chat on today's update. Um, hello. Hello, mate. How are you doing? Good. How are you guys doing? Did you manage to get a decent sleep last night? Well, yeah, uh, you know how it is. <laughs> a little bit uh, nervous, but yep, got some rest. As good as we can get. So uh, thanks, everyone, for joining us. Um, as you know, or you may not know, uh, about an hour ago, we released our brand new update, which is Operation 2, where we are introducing two brand new factions, a main, main faction, the British Expedition, Expeditionary Force, and a sub-faction, the first of its kind and beyond the wire, the 369th Infantry Regiment. So, Bruno, if we can just kick off straight away, we were supposed to be releasing this two weeks ago, actually. We'd, um, we'd stated on the roadmap we were looking around the end of Q1 for this update. Why are we two weeks late, and what have we done with this extra time? Yeah, that's right, Danny. Uh, so, you know how it is like the joys of game development. <laughs> um, we, what we did was we moved the release date by a couple of weeks, uh, just so we can have like, or actually make sure that most of that planned content was going to be in there and going to be polished in time for that release. Uh, a couple of items actually got delayed. Uh, but nothing major, so we're going to be doing a patch later on to include those items. But, you know, almost every single uh, planned item made it in. Um, and uh, it's and that's a lot of stuff for this one. It's a lot of content. This is our big, you know, uh, uh, operation. That's how we're calling it. Uh, and uh, I think my camera just died. Sorry about that. Right, yeah. All right. Sorry about that, everyone. I think uh, I think we should be good. Uh, Bruno's having a couple of uh, overheating problems with his camera, so that's what you get for having such good kit, mate. <laughs> it's such too hot, definition. yeah, too hot to handle. Like this camera <laughs> just literally gave me a warning saying too hot. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right, so let's just go straight back to where we were then, mate. We were going to get break down into why we've decided to do these uh, big content drops, sort of in these operations. So, I don't know if you just want to break down that decision for us quickly. Yeah. So. Uh... Like you just said, these are uh, we're calling this operations. That's the the name uh, we decided to go for with the with the uh, major content drops until Beyond the Wire is uh, ready to leave early access. So that means um, every time you see that there's a an operation coming out, it's going to include uh, you know like uh, for instance on this one we're adding three maps. It's two factions, a lot of new weapons, lots of fixes, uh, quality of life improvements, performance inc improvements. So there's uh, 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 these are the, the the big updates, the big ones, and then also in between those, um, we're going to be releasing uh, smaller updates. So usually those ones are going to include like uh, um, at least like one interesting like new piece of content. For instance, we released uh, both Cantigny and Chateau Thierry. Um, um, those are the, the 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 maps that we released uh, uh, earlier uh, earlier this year, and um, yeah, those are like the the in between updates, and they're smaller, but uh, still very important for us. But definitely, the uh, operation is where it's at. Operation uh, two is uh, uh, this one that we just released. You know, includes three new maps, two new factions, weapons, like I said, all this stuff. And we also have uh, we're uh, getting ready to announce the the operation three that's going to be coming later this year. Uh, but I'm not really going to go into that right now. Um, but just uh, so that people so people know that this is going to be happening later on. Yeah, I think the way we can tie that off is just to, like, the the operations as a way we can package factions and maps that would suit. And so people can probably garner a few ideas from, you know, potential options that we're looking at in that regard. Um, so going on from there, mate, we're, we've got the new factions coming in, um, the British Expeditionary Force and the Harlem Hellfighters, which I'm extremely happy about. Um what are the unique highlights of these factions? Well, uh, there's actually a lot of stuff. Uh, I really want the players to go in there and kind of like discover the new things by themselves. So I'm not going to spoil too much, but there's uh, there's a lot of like new uh, new weapons for them to use. Um, you know, on the on the British side, we have uh, uh, new like uh, uh, field cannons, the the 13 pounder. Um, so that's going to be really interesting to use. Very unique, very different from uh, what we've seen before on Beyond the Wire. Uh, we also have on the Harlem Hellfighters. I'm I'm really happy that we were able to to represent them in this game. 
you know, and and they they're very they're a very interesting faction because they they combine a lot of um, American and French uh, equipment uh, in in this one single faction, and they are just really cool to play with, uh, to play as. And um, what else we have? We have so many things. I cannot even go like and start listing things because we're gonna keep doing this for for days. <laughs> so, but yeah, uh, uh, it, it, I really want players to go in there and, and check it out because it's it's really exciting stuff. Um, and yeah, I think one thing to mention is the captured Gavers for the Hellfighters. Which, yeah, absolutely. Which does throw in a few spanners when you're trying to you know identify by audio where your enemy is and uh yeah those those captured gavers really throw you off so sticking on the yeah. weapons bruno we've got a video to show all right so bruno we've the... loaded the video up we're currently running through the smle rifle so just firing off a few shots just to give everyone um an idea of what the um the sight picture looks like and all that kind of good stuff um awesome so yeah we started off just asking what are these new weapons so can you start from the top again mate for sure, yeah. Like we're seeing there, uh, the SMLE uh, Mark III. That's the British uh, British rifle. You know, very iconic, very powerful, very satisfying to fire. There's a, a sniper variation of it, I believe. Um, yeah, we've got the Pattern 14, which is on screen at the moment. Yeah. With the telescopic optic. Um, yeah, really, really powerful rifles there. Yeah, those are really, really fun to use. Obviously worth Especially with that scope, deadly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's worth mentioning as well that the SMLE is a uh, ten-round capacity, um, which is oh yeah, effective. true. That's a makes it a little bit different from the other rifles in game already. Right. Um, so the uh, the the main pistol of choice is the Webley Mark VI, which has just uh, come up now. Now this has got some beautiful animations uh, that Cab has done, certainly on the reload. Uh, have you had a chance to play with this yet, Bruno? Yeah, it's uh, like you said. Like the the animations make it so satisfying to use. Um, look at that right now. The <laughs> that whole like you know like open up the barrel, put in other put in the bullets in there. It's uh, it's so cool to watch, and um and it's also very powerful, very powerful pistol or revolver. I guess you could it's a revolver, right? Mm. Um, and now uh, I think we're showing the, the Lewis what we're showing now. Oh, that's the Lewis. Yeah. Also, I, I I was really excited to to see that in game. I'm really glad it's it's finally in there. Uh, it's one of my like favorite guns of all time. Right. Uh, definitely something that you're gonna want to use. You know, deploy the the bipod to use that. Um, as we've seen with other submachine guns in on Beyond the Wire, they're not as accurate if they're not uh, uh, if they don't have the uh, bipods deployed. So I definitely recommend using the bipods with that one. Um, uh, um, we also just, have the. Uh, sorry, Bruno. Just to note on the uh, the Lewis itself, that is the gun that will be um, uh, carried by both the light machine gunners and assault class for the British expeditionaries. That's correct. That's correct. Yeah, we decided to to change a little bit uh, how uh, how the assault works for the for the British. So um, they're usually we give the the assault class like their uh, the special weapon for that faction and for this one we decided to go with the lewis gun um it's it's a really powerful it's really going to be interesting to see um that gun being used because um uh, the british faction is going to be able to have uh, an additional uh, an additional submachine gun on their side so that's going to be really interesting to see um yeah we're also we're also looking at the oh that's the the feud gun right now right the feud yeah cannons. so we've just looked at the vickers and we've now swapped to the qf13 so this has literally been been uh, playable since yesterday i think we, we got it into the game so uh, that's we're... correct that one came in really hot uh, but you can see how much detail uh, how much attention to detail was put into this weapon you see all the all the little like all the very int intricate uh, detail of the mechanisms are all in there um and I've actually seen this weapon in real life a few times on museums, and it's uh, it's insane how how good of a job the artists have done on this one. It's it's really beautiful. The animations, everything, the yeah, effects. All, it's it's all very accurate. All the brass gubbins look great. Um, very beautiful. Yeah. So we've just jumped to the number five Mills bomb, which is self-explanatory. Um, mm -hmm. we, we are going to move now to some of the new melee weapons. Um, so we've got the Lead Trench Club, which is going to be for the British, I believe. Nice. Um, yeah, this is where it gets really brutal, right? That's the 
hand-to-hand -hand combat on Beyond the Wire, you know you're gonna expect, uh, you know, lots of lots of blood, I guess, uh, yeah. and, and very interesting uh, um, melee fighting there. Yeah, I think um, if anyone is interested in the melee, it's worth checking the patch notes because there are some changes. One of them being a charge ability that you can now do with melee weapons. So not only have you got a bayonet charge with the bayonet equipped on the rifle, um, you've also got um, a charge with the melee weapons. I've just realized I've, le I've left the wrong title on this cliff. This is the bolo knife. Um, so this would be something for the Harlem Hellfighters and I believe the French. For the Hellfighters, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's really interesting. Like this, uh, this ability to uh, kind of charge with your weapon is similar to what we had before, or we still have with the uh, the bayonet charges. But now you can charge with any any melee weapon, and what it does is basically your character holds holds the weapon back, and, um, and you know like it's get gets ready to 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 attack, and then you can. Uh, uh, I think I believe it all automatically releases when you reach uh, your target. So that's very satisfying when you when you're able to like land those uh, those charges. Awesome, that was great. Thanks, Bruno. So, um, on top of what we've just mentioned, we haven't really touched on the maps yet. So there's three maps uh, coming with this update. Um, so let's just kick off. Go. We'll go straight with Sashol. Um, so we've got another video of Sashol, which is going to be a mixture of some flyovers, some walk around, and some gameplay. Um, so we'll have that playing while while Bruno gives us a rundown on Sashol. Yeah, nice. Um, yeah, we have like we have uh, uh, added three new maps, like you said, on the, on this on this patch on this update, um, and that's. Uh, that's as many maps as we had on release on when we first launched on early access. So you, just so people can understand the, the the size of this update is like the sheer amount of content that's coming in. And this uh, what we have on screen right now is uh, Sesho. Uh, Sesho is a uh, um, it, it's an area in in the basically it, it was in the uh, Musergon front, and it was in you know late late September 1918. Um, this battle was like really important, especially for the for the Harlem Hellfighters, um, and it, it, it's a. I'm really proud that we were able to represent them fighting in this area on Beyond the Wire, and and it's a really interesting, very unique map. Uh, in terms of uh, geography, you know, like you can see on the video there, this is very different from the other maps that we. Um, we have on uh, on Beyond the Wire that are already released, or the, even the, like the new maps. This this map stands out because it's so different. It takes place in an, in this area that actually actually I I don't think any other game has ever represented this area mm -hmm. on a uh, uh, um uh, yeah like in World War One. I. I, I don't think there's other FPS out there that's representing these battles. Um, right, and it features a lot of trenches. Uh, and then they were, they were dug into like this chalk-like soil. You see like this white, uh, whitish soil. And actually, if you've seen uh, uh, the movie 1917, it's uh, kind of similar to the area that uh, shows in the uh, uh, final battle sequence, where you see the main character running off a mm -hmm. trench, and there's like British troops go going over the top and all that. So it's kind of similar to that. Um, and it's just like overall a very, very interesting uh, map to fight on. Very, uh, very unique. Um, uh, a good portion of this this map is going to be fought over this um, um, this hill, or uh, actually like this valley. <laughs> There's two hills on the one on each side, um, and players are going to be yeah fighting over this valley that's completely like. Uh, 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 both bombed and and like there's lots of craters and all that but there's also uh, a, a very intricate um uh trench network in there and then you can as you move out of that area you go into a more like a, a little bit more preserved area where, where there's a, li a little bit more of uh yeah preserved few fields um where uh you know players are going to be able to to basically move to from from this this chalk like soil to like a very different area very very unique um i think that's going to make it very very interesting for everyone for sure and and you you emphasize there that the chalky material that we've used here but the contrast with the the lush green um is is quite you know quite striking really um and does impact gameplay which is quite surprising um because obviously when you're looking for outlines and things that moving on the chalky surfaces they stand out 
quite quite a lot. So um, it's a really great map, and like you said, the Harlem Hellfighters. Um, it just feels like a great map for that to introduce them. So uh, next, up, yeah, absolutely. Sorry, mate. Next up, we've got Combles or Combler, uh, which was part of the Battle mm -hmm. of the Somme. So we'll do the same again. We've got similar sort of footage. So so let's go, mate. Yep. Just so you know, I think my camera is about to overheat again here. So sorry, I might we've got lose five camera. minutes of video, mate. So we can lose you if we need to. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna turn it off for a second. Yeah. So yeah, what we have on screen right now, that's the um, capture of Comble. That's the name of the, this level. And it's, uh, like you said, part of the Battle of the Somme. Uh, that was in 1916. Uh, we had both British and Fran uh, French forces that fought uh, German forces um, uh, on uh, end of September, actually. Um, this battle happened after like several days of rain. So, and we we're representing that in this map with, you know, lots of puddles and areas where uh, water basically becomes a, a real danger to the players. And I think we're going to find out that, you know, maneuvering around the, this destroyed village while capturing and holding these objects and like uh, trying to avoid the water areas or maybe using the water areas to, to your advantage, it's going to be really key here. Um, this map is also like very unique to uh, in terms of uh, visuals, like one thing that uh, uh, we kept in mind while designing this map was uh, it, it's kind of the visual opposite of uh, what um, Sesho is. So if Sesho was the like the white and green map, this is the uh, kind of like black and brown and you know dirt uh, kind of map. Um, so yeah, visually cr cr creates a lot of contrast between those those two levels there. And we're also featuring a uh, uh, nighttime player for this map, oh, as yeah. you can see there. Yeah, so I, I know a lot of people in the community are very excited for this kind of this kind of content. I, I know I am myself as well. Um, it, it, it really changes the feel of the map completely when you play uh, on it, uh, you know, at nighttime versus versus daytime. In, in, in this case, our daytime here is actually like a sunset, uh, but still very bright. Uh, and then when you go into nighttime, it's a, a lot darker and, and, and a, there's a definitely like a high impact on, on visibility there. Now those engagements um, just draw right in to those sort of medium range engagements. And what, what I just want to jump in and say there, because the footage is on at the minute, as when you get past sort of the, the, the center field towards the German lines, it really becomes quite difficult because you've got quite deep craters and trench lines that don't protrude past the ground. So... You know, you've got Germans stacked up shooting at you out of out of the ground. Basically, it's it's really difficult yeah. to push past that line. Exactly, and that's where players are going to have to use uh, uh, tactics. You know, like are going to have to deploy smoke uh, and even gas, and you know, like use the artillery from the that, that commanders can call in, uh, and you know, place uh, uh, machine gun masts and place uh, field cannons in a way that we will allow them to to push into that uh, into that German um, fortified position there on that hill. Uh, and it's really fortified and it's really, it's gonna be a really interesting challenge for the attackers there. Um, okay. And very unique as well. I don't think there's any any other area on Beyond the Wire that is exactly like this. It's a little similar to how um, how things are on uh, Alsoncourt, which is another, another map that we have where you have one team kind of attacking this hill. Uh, but this one is a little bit more in the open. There's no, uh, there's not a lot of forests. So uh, it, I think it's going to, it's going to present itself as a very interesting challenge to the players there. I'm really awesome. excited to see them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This, I think this has probably been my favorite map so far um, for a couple of reasons, but uh, I'm sure everyone's looking forward to getting in. Uh, we'll give your camera a couple more minutes, mate, and we'll jump straight into Paul Capel. So Paul Capel will be the, Third map coming with this update, uh, which is uh, from Flanders in Belgium. So do you want to run through Paul Capel, mate? Yeah, for sure. Like you said, um, it's a battle that takes place in that uh, region of Flanders. Uh, it's our second battle on uh, in, in Belgium. Um, and it's part of the, the third battle of Ypres. That's, that was a lot of numbers there. Mm. <laughs> um, but basically, it's... Uh, in various ways, this map is a little bit similar to uh, to Zonebake. Um, I, if I'm not mistaken, and I, let me just double check this real quick here. We had some. Uh, it, basically, what happened here was uh, while the the 
uh, the Germans were attacking on on zone back uh, pretty much at the same time. We had the British forces um, attack this other uh, village nearby. That's Polkapel. So there was like this circling motion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if, you, if you were looking at this, like the the map of uh, Belgium from like top down, it would be like they're they're kind of like circled around. Um, and like I said, it's it's very close to zone back, and it's. Uh, um, we trying to we try to make it like very uh, unique still. So geographically speaking, you're still going to see some of the same features. It's uh, lots of uh, muddy fields. There there was a lot of bombing that happened here, uh, but we did take some uh, uh, some artistic liberties to make it you know a, a little bit more unique here and there, while also you know keeping the uh, authenticity of this map, trying to keep it as close as possible to to how how it felt like in real life and how it was in real life during those those battles uh this map is gonna feature a lot of uh trench war warfare as expected <laughs> um and it also contains like this semi intact village in the center where players will be able to fight over objectives in, in like close close quarters um so that's going to be very cool, very interesting. Mm. Um, and, you know, like overall, I think this is going to be a very, <laughs> this map in particular is going to be very muddy uh, and a very deadly map to fight on. Yeah, the one one point is the um, the increase in standing water that's noticeable. This is going to be a place where the engineers with duck boards are really going to come into play. Um, certainly yeah, absolutely. Certainly with trying to break out from the village into the outskirts, there are you know, big masses of water that can really quite hinder, um, if you put your camera back on, mate, um, that can really quite hinder that traversal. So those new duck boards with the engineers will, will come into play. Um, so I think that's it for you at the minute, Bruno. We're going to jump back on with um, Alex, who's we're going to run through some of the uh, feature and uh, uh, design changes that have come with this update. But if I can tap you up in about 20, 15 minutes, mate, and we'll do a and a yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Thanks, mate. I'll see you later. Thank you. See you. Bye. Right, guys, Bye -bye. I'm going to play the trailer one more time and then we'll be back with Alex. So uh, we'll see you shortly. Yes, hello everyone. Give me one minute while I uh, get the right name here for Alex. So uh, it's been a while since we've had you on, mate, but Alex is uh, lead game design. Um, so you've had quite an input on this update, mate, because there's obviously been quite a few changes 
um, to uh, not only things like game modes uh, and things like that, but also a lot of the capture mechanics and things like that as well within game mode. So um, we've we've identified engineers to kick off. So I think that'd be a good place to start considering we've just touched on the duck boards there. So if you just want to run through um, what we can expect from this new section type really, mate. Yeah, sure. Hey everyone. Um, yeah, so for engineer section, they're really there to kind of, you know, shape the battlefield uh, a little bit differently. Uh, give players a little bit more control over how the battlefield gets shaped, I should say. So they have a couple different uh, ways of doing that. The first one is uh, the section leader. He has uh, some deployables. So he, he can deploy this giant heavy fortification. It takes a long time to build up, so it's better if a bunch of people are helping out. But as, a, as, the, as you build it, it gets better and better defenses until at the very end, you know, it has overhead protection, it has barbed wire in front of it and firing ports uh, that are really nice. And uh, I've been playing all morning and I've been seeing them used and it's pretty awesome. You know, you can fit a couple people in there. Light machine guns have a really good spot in there, uh, especially on assault for like the defenders. You should definitely be using that engineer section. Some of the other things they can do, um, the leader can also deploy an ammunition depot and that's going to, resupply everyone's ammo in a pretty big radius from it. It's also going to let riflemen resupply their ammo bags. So if they're using their ammo bags and it's depleted, then they can go back to the ammunition depot and get a new one. And uh, on top of that, all the roles in the sections, so the leader and the engineers, yeah, they have a bunch of their own personal deployables, so like sandbags, barbed wire, uh, duck boards, like you were talking about. The duck boards can be used uh, on water surfaces, so you can actually build like a little bridge if you want. And that'll let you get through the mud and the water really quickly. Yeah, they all, they've also I've actually seen people using them in other applications as well. Let's uh, let's just call them not river crossings, <laughs> but they can be placed anywhere. So it is quite good watching how people have been inventive with them. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm excited to see what players are going to do. Oh yeah, ladders too. I should mention. It depends on which role you take, but some of them have ladders, so you can get into some pretty squirrely places with those excellent so I, I, sorry if you mentioned it mate but that's a three-man section um so there's just a three 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 uh limit three man limit on the on that section so um there's no restriction is there you could go with two builders or two sappers couldn't you if you wanted yeah yeah so within the section there's two different types of roles there's the engineer and the sapper and uh the two players who join the squad so other than the leader they can pick whichever one they want um, so the, the uh, engineer is more focused towards defense. So he has like the sandbags and the barbed wire. And the sapper is more of like an, I, I want to say more of an offensive role. So he's got the ladders. I'm not sure if we have it in or not, but he has a prototype uh, Bangalore to torpedo, which uh, is kind of like a timed explosive. And in World War One, they would use those to clear large sections of barbed wire. And that is... Uh, you know pretty much how it's going to work as well but obviously you know it's still a timed explosive you could use it different ways also yeah right I mean, you may even see situations with the sappers actually operating away from the section almost with the infantry when they're ready to push so looking forward to seeing how that dynamic's going to break down and um, so the next yep. sorry mate so the next point the major one for you really is game mode so not only has the function of the game modes changed in certain ways but the so of the mechanics of like capture time so I don't know if you want to just quickly run through through front lines and then assault, mate. What, however you want to do it. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so uh, let's cover assault because not as much changed with assault. Um, the big change in assault is now there's a delay phase between when the attackers have captured a sector, and this delay phase I think is like two minutes long, or ninety seconds, and they can't move into the next sector until that cooldown's over. So. The idea behind this is to give the defenders and the attackers both some time to kind of reorganize um, before that next push. Also give them some meaningful downtime where, you know, you can just kind of chill out for 90 to 120 seconds before, you know, the chaos ensues once again. I think that's, I think that's about it for Assault. So Frontlines is where a lot of the changes are. It's yeah, we, we've internally called it an overhaul, so I think it's fair to say Frontlines is pretty much completely overhauled. It's a lot of the same principles, but the thing I really didn't like about the old implementation was 
it all came down to who was controlling the territory at the very end of that phase. So all of those actions throughout the course of that phase, you weren't really being rewarded for. Um, it just came down to the wire, like who, you know, who, who owns this at that last possible second. So instead we moved towards um, uh, a system that generates victory points essentially. So it, instead of, you know, who holds the majority at the end of the phase, it's now who generates enough victory points throughout the course of the phase, if that makes sense. So when a team holds more than 50% of the capture points, they'll start generating victory points for themselves. And once they reach a certain threshold, it's, I think it's a thousand points right now, then they win that phase. Okay. What, um, and so this front lines, the new, um, the new phases, they're no longer timed. It's purely point-based. They're still timed. Yeah, sorry. So they are still timed. Um, but basically if the timer expires, then we're just looking at who has the most victory points essentially. Right. And they win the phase or the sector. Yeah, exactly. Well, okay. yeah. All right. Um, so I don't, I don't think there's much, there's much else that we can cover here, mate, unless there was anything you wanted to, to mention. I know you and I could probably go on for a good hour about, um, what's coming next but we think we need to hold on that uh and wait for the roadmap because there's, there's a lot of interesting things one thing we could do that you've spent a lot of time doing recently mate is just um mention about the gameplay layers we've got now sure yeah yeah i mean leading up to the uh release it felt like that's pretty much all i was doing um so we we went from about i think it was 15 gameplay layers in the last version to about 28 in this current version, and it's likely we're probably going to add some more um, over time. And when I say gameplay layer, it just means like a combination of map and faction. So some of these new maps that were added, for example, uh, Bruno did a really good, good job of explaining them. So like Polkapel, that's part of the Ypres salient. Um, the British were there, you know, I think throughout every different battle of Ypres, but especially in like the third battle of Ypres, like the battle of Passchendaele, as it's more commonly known. And then also at the uh, first battle of Ypres, you had French and British there. So, you know, we, we can create a gameplay layer where the French are there, uh, you know, maybe in a different year, like 1914, and we'll have a, another gameplay layer on Polkapel where it's uh, the battle of Passchendaele with the British on it. And uh, we have a lot of different combinations. We typically try to choose, um, a map or a battle to represent that was kind of fought throughout the course of the war and that just lets us have a lot of flexibility when it comes to which factions we want to use on that map lovely thank you mate um and that was actually quite evident when you uh, load into the server browser now that new map name will be quite clearly identified the year uh, the factions and the map um that's, that's being played so um awesome thanks alex um champion effort for this mate really appreciate your effort and um yeah let you get back to work <laughs> thanks yeah can i can i share one more thing yeah please do yeah it's kind of it's kind of a leak but um so some of these battles take place in 1914 and i think a lot of observant people have noticed that there's equipment differences uh you know in early war versus late war but we're typically only using late war stuff now and i just want to say that that will probably change okay we're not saying anything else that's it you're gonna to have to go now mate because uh you're gonna end up spilling all the beans uh thank you mate I'll, okay. I'll catch you a bit later see ya all right let's uh let's get bruno back um so yeah as alex said we've got uh, 28 game players now um which is pretty much double what we what we had to offer uh, before this update so uh, variety and objectives uh, factions on the map um, all that good stuff so hey bruno welcome back mate is your camera cooled down hello i think so yeah let me just uh, turn it on again here one second please it's a whole thing <laughs> no that's all right uh, bruno's come back to do some uh, questions uh, from the chat so uh, if anyone's got anything pertinent they'd like to ask um we'll be having a chat with bruno there he is Lovely. there it is 
No, I just need to remove these. Okay, so um, one that is sort of uh, dovetailed with what Alex <laughs> has ended on, um, which is a question from Adam McDonald. How about customising the uniforms which are respective to that year? We, I don't know if you caught, we were talking about the different year options we're offering with the map players now. Um, so anything we can say about that? Yeah, exactly. I don't want to uh, spoil anything or you know leak anything, <laughs> but we are uh, we're definitely aware of that. Uh, and it, it, it like Alex said, uh, it is very likely that this is going to be changing in the future, um, especially on that customization side, um, in terms of items, equipment, and stuff like that. But I cannot say any, anything else here. <laughs> no, I think I think we just leave it with we're still aiming for historical accuracy. So I think oh, that yeah, can, absolutely. that's a pretty good way to leave that one. Um, so there's a question here, which um, uh, Radio Rich has asked. So we've added the Holland Hellfires as a sub-faction for the Entente. Uh, are we looking to add any for the Central Powers? And if yes, what do we have on our mind? Absolutely. We are looking into uh, some other factions in there. It is uh, it is a little bit challenging since the especially the um, the Germans were so uniform. Uh, you know, their uh, uh, all the sections that that fought were uh, pretty similar. But we're looking into to, into some options there to make it um, to find some basically find some unique ones and and uh, uh, basically bring those those unique points to light and on beyond the wire. Uh, so yeah, we can definitely expect some some different uh, uh, Central Powers uh, factions to show up eventually. We're going to be announcing uh, them when, when the time comes, um, but it's it's definitely something we want to we be doing. Yeah, I, I think, to, number one, it would probably not, the, the system for the, for the Central Powers probably won't look the same due to what you mentioned there, that there were no real standout individual units or regiments. So, um, you know, exploring this new sub-faction system, we'll, we'll, we'll end up landing somewhere where we can offer some sort of variety for the central powers. Um, exactly. So uh, a question here, which I can answer. Uh, do we have a plan for the player base such as free weekends? Yes, uh, we have a free weekend planned. We can't announce anything yet, but it's coming soon. Uh, we've obviously kicked off a sale today, which is 35% uh, off, which is happening for a week. Um, and we'll obviously have a roadmap update probably next week, um, which will update the community on what they can expect over the next six to eight months uh, sort of time frame. So um, we understand everyone's concerns. We're not overly worried. We can see the numbers um, and, you know, we, we see everyone's feedback as well. So um, Operation 2 was sort of the first step we were making on this early access journey, given that it's the first major content drop it's doubling the content that we originally entered early access with, um, you know, at the least. So, yeah. Um, let me go. Can can you explain changes to the commander, Bruno? Um, I know we detailed there was a new way to access the command map and things like that. Um, I think that would be a better question for Alex, actually, uh, I know that there are changes. I know that we're uh, improving a lot of systems on the commander side. Uh, the, the 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 version of it, like the, the the first implementation of it, was a little bare bones, and we're getting it to be a little bit more uh, user friendly and uh, to make more sense in the game. Um, so, I, can't, I, I I'm not really uh, comfortable going into the specific changes that that happen uh, for this update. But there's definitely like quality of life improvements. There's like you know usability improvements in there, um, and I think it's going to be overall much much better experience for players uh, playing as a commander class. Um, yeah. Cool. Uh, I've just seen one here. I can answer real quick. Um, uh, any thoughts for future um, adding, say, the Highlanders within the British Expeditionary Force? So yes. Um, as part of that process of looking at more options for central powers involved in that is obviously uh, additional sub-factions for, for the Entente on the Western Front because there is an array of options, um, certainly, um, and a lot of interesting ones as well. Um, you know, Like we said back at the start, these operations are going to act as packages that um, you know the factions are relevant to the maps we release. So, yeah. Um, exactly, yeah. If I can comment on that real quick, uh, 
the this the system that we put together for for this sub faction really uh, uh, opens a lot of doors for us in terms of creating new factions like we did with the Harlem Hellfighters on this time. And Harlem Hellfighters was a a, a, a a good first, you know, like first implementation of this system. And now we're going to be able to expand on it and and add all a, a, a bunch of other. Uh, interesting factions that were not like you know oh it's just the country no it's a more uh, narrow down like more specific uh, 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 section or uh, uh, or a regiment or something like that so we're likely to see some some uh, various uh, various new factions coming sub factions coming in like that now that we have the system implemented lovely exciting um, have optimize thanks Amish have optimizations improved in this new update absolutely that that's like always a um it's always a big challenge for us when you're making a, a game that is for 100 players it takes you know each map is gigantic um <laughs> it's kind of fun like we see sometimes other other games being like oh this is how we make massive maps i'm like you have to see massive maps. <laughs> These are massive maps. <laughs> uh, yeah, so performance is always a, 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 a ongoing battle. Um, and we're, on every update, we're making things more performant, not just on, a, uh, not just on the uh, side of like uh, uh, art and graphics and all that, but also like in the background, there's a lot of happen there's a lot of stuff happening on the CPU, on the GPU that you don't, you don't really see in, in necessarily all the time. Uh, so there's a lot of optimization happening on, on uh, like behind the curtains, um, as well as uh, uh, in center stage as well on the on the maps and, and characters and weapons and all that kind of stuff. Um, a big thing we did this time was uh, we adjusted a lot of the uh, a lot of the graphics settings for you know when you go into this in the options menu and there's like. If you want to play on, uh, you can change the the quality settings there. Um, and if you go like you know low, medium, high, or or ultra, uh, those are actually going to make a lot more difference now uh, uh, in terms of performance. And we try to keep you know if if you're playing on low or on ultra, we're trying to keep the uh, overall visual experience not too different. Like it's it's not going to be very different from from low to ultra, but of course, if you play on Ultra, if you have the hardware for that, you're gonna have a, a, a nicer experience. But you can still play on low, even on on lower end uh, uh, graphics cards and 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 processors. Right, and that's just gonna be like a constant battle, even beyond 1.0 launch. Right, Every, even um, adding new systems and features, they're gonna need optimizing for sure. New map exactly. And so yeah and there's always there's always new things that are coming in you know like new technology that we're exploring uh, and you know that both represent the, they, they bring more visual interest to the game you know like we can we can now do for, for instance uh volumetric uh fog is a, is a big one that we have now uh which basically means that if you see fog in game it's gonna kind of like behave a lot more like it does in real life it's not gonna look as gamey uh but it also comes with a cost, so we had to like uh, optimize some other areas of the game to clear out the budget for that uh, that kind of new new visual feature. Uh, and the idea is that over time, performance is going to get better and better and better. Um, and that's that. <laughs> that's the uh, the holy grail, like perfect that's optimization. Holy grail. <laughs> yep. Right. Well, you optimize it so much, it, it goes backwards at some point. You're <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> min maxing the uh, the uh, optimization, right? Considering yeah, that's exactly. like the most popular subject, I think we're going to leave it there. We've been on nearly an hour, which was a little bit longer than we wanted, but it, it's been great having you, Bruno. Uh, thank you as always, mate. Absolutely, it's always a pleasure to be here. Thank you all, uh, all the guys watching, all the guys uh, uh, sending questions here. I really always enjoy this uh, Q and A session. Um, and yeah, let's go play the game. It's, uh, it's yep. time for some Beyond the Wire, man. Yeah, for anyone who doesn't know, Operation 2 uh, went live today. Um, so get involved. We're 35% off on Steam. Uh, we'll see you in the trenches. Goodbye. Bye-bye.